All right, welcome back to this full Excel eSports course. We're in the programming chapter, and we're finally onto the recursion video. So we're gonna cover the scan and reduce formulas in this video. So recursion is basically doing something over and over again. So in the context of Excel, we can think of an input. We do a formula or something to it, and then we get an output. That output then becomes the input, and we do the thing again and get a new output. That becomes the input, we do the thing again, and so on and so on and so on. And we'll do that either up to a stopping point or a certain number of times. Now, small warning, this video is gonna be kind of dependent on the knowledge from the last videos. So I would go and watch at least the Lambda and Lambda helper functions video if you don't have an understanding of those already, otherwise this will probably not make much sense. So the last video, we talked about starting to do things in a single cell way and running into problems that require Lambda help functions. So we covered by row, by col, and map. And scan and reduce are another one of those things where you can do something spilled out in a model quite simply, but not in an array in a single cell way. And that's where scan and reduce come in. So let's give you an example, and then I'll tell you what I don't like about the example, and then I'll give a better example. So if you watch the game chapter videos, there was a number of games where we, for example, rolled dice. So let's pretend these are dice rolls. I've got 100 of them at random. And there were things we wanted to do, like calculating a running total of points. So let's say you roll a dice, you get some points over 100 rolls, and you want to know what your points are at every step. So the way we did that before, we said we start at zero points, and then we take whatever points we had before, and plus the new points that we rolled. And as we drag that down, we see, you know, we take what we had before, we add the new points, so on and so on. So we get a running sum. Now, if you want to do this in a single cell, that's where scan comes in. So let's set up the syntax. So we say scan. We want to put an initial value and an array. So let's have our initial value as zero. That's up here. And our array is this. This is the array we want to iterate through. And this syntax is very much like the by row, by col stuff we covered in the last video. So again, watch it if you haven't. But essentially what this is saying is take each element of this array and do something to it. That's what the scan wrapper here is doing. It's saying take an initial value and an array, and I want to do a function to my initial value using a value in this array. You don't have to use a value in that array, but most of the time, and then give me a new value and repeat that process for every single item in the array. So now we need to tell it what that function is. And we could just use a function in isolation here, like sum, we could use that and we get exactly the same as our running sum from before, but it's now in a dynamic array way. As we know from the Lambda video, we can change these, these functions that are in isolation to our own function. So we could say Lambda, but the difference here when we have it wrapped in a scan is we need to say A, V, or any two letters. And that A is representing our initial value, or what I like to think of as accumulator. That's why it's, I've called it A. So our accumulator at the start is zero. We will do something to it and our output will become the new A and so on. So it's our accumulated value that goes along. Um, v, I've just put as values from the array. And this, this syntax is a little bit confusing, but it's a bit like by row, where we said by row, here's our array. And then we had to say lambda, and then give the lambda function an input. So our input there was rows, and then we did something for each row. Here we have two inputs, an accumulated value and an array. So it might not make much sense, but let's explain it one more time when I put a plus v. So this is our function. I want to take a and plus v to it. Let's break it down one more time, because this confused me when I first learned it. We're going to say scan. An initial value is zero and an array is here and we want to iterate through that array. Then we're going to give it a function. We're going to say lambda AV or it could be XY or any two letters or any two names of your choosing. And the first letter refers to your initial value and the second letter refers to each element one by one in your array. Then what do we want to do? We want to do A plus V. So our accumulator on the first step is zero. Our V is this four here. So we get four. Four then becomes our new accumulated value and then we take the next element of our array which is V, which is two. So we do four plus two is six. And we repeat that process over and over again until we get to the end of the array. Now, this is the example that almost every scan tutorial video goes through. And I like it in the fact that it's simple and it kind of gets you to understand the scan formula. But if you've come from this way of working, then you're not gonna be convinced to go to this way um, because it just seems more complicated. This is easy, you know, it's hard. And we'll build on this in a moment to show you examples where you kind of have to use scan and you can't do it in an old way. But let's just take this simple running sum example and highlight how it can really speed you up in an eSports case. So I went through this example earlier in the course, I think, on the dice chapter, but we're gonna do it again now using the scan formula, which will be vastly quicker. So the idea is we have a game board, we have a number of dice throws, just like we did a moment ago. We run around the game board and we wanna know what turn takes us past space 21. So we want to do a running sum of these dice and see where it hits 21 or more. So let's just get our dice values out for a second. And we showed how to do this in the dice video. We could say Unicode of all the dice minus, minus nine, eight, five, five. So there's all of our dice values. So this is the array that we want to iterate through and do a running sum. So we can say scan, start at zero. Here's our array to iterate through. And then we need to say Lambda, A, V, always. 
Again, any two letters of your choosing, sometimes I use XY if I've already used A or V in a formula, but normally always AV for me. Now what do we want to do? We want to do A plus V. And what you'll see is it gives us a running total. So where does this go above 21? So let's just manually have a look. We go from 19, we roll a six, we hit 25. So it's space eight or roll eight where we go above 21. So that's our answer. So how do we find 21 or more in there? We just X match 21 into our new calculated array and our match mode is exact match or next larger item. So that's eight. So let's just copy that formula into here um, and then we should be able to do that here and drag it down. Now I'm not gonna do this whole case, but it is very easy once you know the scan formula. I'm gonna just do question two to just highlight that for a second. So on this question two, we need to land exactly on the 21st space, otherwise we won't go past it. So for this, you can just say, um, if A plus V is greater than 21, then we don't move, we stay where we were. So we just take our old value A, otherwise we do A plus V. And that will just, you know, solve question two. So small change, but you can start to see the power of something as simple as a running sum within a scan. If you were not to use a scan here, you'd have to spill out each line individually with a model and then either data table through them or whatever else it might be. So now we've got a simple example out of the way. I'm gonna show a different one where you kind of need um, the scan formula. But before that, I'm just gonna give you a flavor of reduce. So what reduce does is it gives you the last value um, from a scan. So it's essentially doing the iteration until the end and just gives you the end points. So if I change that scan to reduce, we should see we just get 344, four, which is our final value. We're gonna come back to reduce, so don't worry too much, but let's just now give you a new example of scan. I've got the alphabet here, and the question is remove all of these letters from the alphabet and tell me what it looks like without these letters included. So most of us will know we can use the substitute formula to get rid of a letter. So we could say substitute from this string, the old text is an A and our new text is blank. And that would get rid of the A. We could get rid of any letter of our choosing there. But how do we get rid of all of this stuff? Well, we can't just um, click this because it's gonna look for that string A, H, Y, E, and that doesn't appear here. So nothing will get removed. So what we really wanna do is substitute with an A, and then we wanna wrap it in substitute again. So now we substitute that string, uh, but we're gonna substitute the H for nothing. And now we've got rid of A and H, and then we'll wrap it in substitute again and do the Y and then the E and so on and so on. So this is exactly what um, scan and reduce are doing. So the array we want to iterate through is all of the individual letters of that. We built this lambda in the last video. Um, if you want to do it manually, it's mid of this, um, sequence of the length of this, um, one character at a time. So that is, um, you know, instead of writing that out all the time, I built a lambda to do it. You can do the same if you watch the other videos. So this is the array I want to iterate through. Now let's do a scan. So scan, here's our initial value. Here's the array we want to iterate through one by one. Let's just lock our alphabet there. Now, the function I wanna do, we always have to say lambda a v to tell our function here what the inputs are. And then what do we wanna do? We wanna substitute our initial value, so our alphabet. What is the old text? Well, the scan is gonna iterate through this letter by letter. So our old text is v, our new text is blank. And that is all we need to do. And that is essentially doing that substitute thing four times over like we did before. So let's just pull this out here for a sec and we'll do um, split text of this. So we get rid of the A from the alphabet and then we take this and we get rid of the H and then we take this and we get rid of the Y and then we take this and we get rid of the E. So we're left with that. So if I change that scan to reduce now, we just get the final value from the iteration. We can put that back over here, drag that down and we have done it for each of these um, letter designations to remove. Now let's show you a example from an esports case where we can use that. So this is a level seven from Wabble. So just to give you an idea, we have a dictionary of words here. Um, and in the very last question, we were given tiles and we want to know which words we could make. So if I just pull our tiles up here for a second. So how do we determine if we can make these words with these letters? Well, what we can do is we can just substitute out the first letter of this from each of these and we can repeat it over all of these tiles. And if any of the results end up blank, it means we eliminated all the tiles and could make the word. So let's just take this word here because it's a bit um, longer. And I'm gonna say um, scan, here's our initial value. Our array is the letters of this. And then lambda a v, what do we wanna do? We wanna substitute from our word, our old text is gonna be the first letter of our tiles and then second and third and so on. And our new text is gonna be blank. And here we wanna do instance number one. So if something had multiple A's, I'm not gonna eliminate all the A's, I'm gonna do it one by one. So I'm only gonna be able to use my tiles one by one. 
So on the first step, we try and remove an A, and only the first instance of it, so we're left with A, R, G, H. Then we try and remove a B, well there's none. Then we try and remove an H, yes, so we remove the last letter. Then an I, of which there were none. Then an R, yes, we remove that. And then TW, there were none of, so we're left with AG. So we can't make this word because we're left with some tiles. So let's just change this to a reduce. I'm gonna lock our um, tiles there. And what you'll see is we get AG. So I'm just gonna put that um, here for a second. And if I drag that up, uh, there we go. This is kind of all of what's left. So to find all of the words we can make, we just need to look for where this is blank. So let's say filter all of our words where this equals a blank. So here's all the words we can make with these tiles. And if you look at them, you know, bait, we have B, A, I, and T in our tiles, so it, it looks right, we can make all of those words. I mean, this formula is not that long. When you know reduce, it's not actually that complicated, but having these tools under our belt can allow us a level seven, very hard, hardest question of the case to be done um, relatively easily, I would say. Okay, now I want to build it up to a slightly harder example of this. And again, this is, this is a Harry Watson case, and my next example is also going to be a Harry Watson case, and it's called Old Money. So the final bonus question, supposedly the hardest question of the case, potentially, is to find the song with the most money. So we have these songs here, and we have Sixpence, Groat. These are all names for old um, currency coins that have um, a certain value. So this is 16 for the penny and so on. So I'm just gonna write the values here. Um, I don't need to, you to watch me do this. So I'm just gonna write, you know, equals one over 16 for 16. For, let me just quickly do this and then I'll show you the reduce method. Okay, so I have my coins here and I have my values here. So I'm just gonna copy those out to these songs tab. There we go. And my idea is to replace all the words that appear. So this six pence, find that in here, six pence, replace it with a six. So I wanna iterate through this and replace the words with their values. Now, one thing I need to be careful of is that some words appear twice. So I have half crown, but I also have crown. So if I replace crown first with 60, I would end up with half 60, which is not right. I need to replace the half crown first. So I want to order this by length. So let's just quickly say um, len of that. And normally I would do this in one whole formula in a dynamic array way, including this, this length bit. Um, but I'm just showing you in an understandable way because I want to keep the confusion to a minimum. So let's sort by length. And here's my array um, that I want to replace things with. So let's just do it line by line for now. So I want to say scan. Here's my initial value. My array is this, and I want to replace it with this array. But now I have a problem. I want to um, iterate through two different arrays. And with scan, I can't really do that. However, there is a trick with reduce where I can. And the trick is to combine these into one array. So I basically want to say this um, and a dash and this, pull that down, and then I have one array. But I'm gonna do this dynamically because one, I wanna recap by row from the last video, and two, I wanna show you how to do everything purely kind of single cell here. So I'm gonna say by row, here's my array, lambda r for the row, what do I wanna to do to the, to the row? I wanna say text join with a dash, um, my row. And what you see is we're, we've done it dynamically. So now we can use our scan, say scan, Here's our initial value. What's our array? Well, here's our array. Let's lock it. What do we want to do? So we start with lambda a b. So what I want to do here is I want to substitute a, our text. So for the old value, we can do text before um, dash. And for the new value, we can do text after dash. So we're going to say text before v and the dash. So we're taking the text before the dash in v. And our new value is exactly the same but text after, so I'm gonna copy it and change that to text after. And that should be it. So we're gonna iterate through this array and do that. We will we'll run into a problem though, which I'll show you. So I'll line it up, we're iterating through this array and these are our final results. So I'm gonna use reduce to just show the final result here. So if I change that to reduce, there we go. Um, but we have a problem, crown has not been replaced. And why is that? It's because in here, crown has a capital C and substitute is case sensitive. So what I need to do is change them both to the same case. So I'll put our initial value as lower, and I'm gonna change this array here to be um, lower. And now you see that crown has changed to 60. And if I drag this down, um, no numbers there. Here we get six pence, so we get six. Here we get a groat, so we get a four, and so on and so on. So what we can actually do to make this truly single cell is I can change our array to be this whole by row thing here. So let's copy that 
put that into here, uh, just lock that. We can then delete this out and there you go. So our first song is there. So at this point, all we need to do is pull out all of the numbers uh, from this text and add it up. We've shown how to do that in a different video, but we'll do it now. Reg extract from this um, backslash D plus. We want all matches of it and we want to sum them up. So sum. So we've shown that in another video, so I won't do it again. I'm just going to do if error, give us a zero because there may be some uh, that don't have any numbers in and pull that down. There we go. The value of our song is 177. So that's the esports example. I'm going to give you one more example, which is very similar to what we just did. And this is a real life example. So at work, I was given a data sheet, which was basically a website scrape of products, uh, their ingredients and their, their feeding methods. So just to show you what that looked like, it looked like this. It was horrible HTML text, unreadable. Um, someone messaged me, you know, I hear you're quite good at Excel. Can you turn this into a readable format? So I've just taken three um, examples here. And what I did is I just needed to replace the HTML type text and wrappers with something. So a lot of them were blanks. Some of them were, you can't see them, but they're line space um, characters for paragraph separators. Some of them are spaces and so on and so on. So just to show you the output of that, I've put the text in white here, so I'll reveal it in a second. I said reduce from this and then by row, I text joined it with a lot of dashes to not eliminate any dashes that are supposed to be there. So I joined these into one array and then I did text before the V, text after with my substitute, exactly like I just showed. And let's see uh, what came out. So there we go. Nice um, usable text with the line breaks. Um, like so, and I could just drag that down across thousands of products, and we said we saw, you know, human readable uh, feeding instructions. Basically, this was for supplements. And that was that. It was a 20-minute job. I saved someone days and days of work doing that manually. Okay, that's it. This was a complicated topic, so don't worry if that didn't all sink in. It took me a long time, um, but if you practice it and you're willing to put the time in, then I think the the benefits here are really worth it with these two formulas. Next time we're going to cover combinatorics. That's kind of the number of ways you can do something or how many combinations of things there are. We're going to talk about when to explore all those combinations or when to look for a different method. So there's going to be some good examples on that one um, and hopefully I'll see you next time.